I don't know why I get the giggles every time I try and start that. (laughs) He's a gambler. He's a farm boy. He's a lovable scamp. He's got a cool dagger. He spells his name with only one T. (laughs) It's Matt Cawthon. What's his deal? (laughs) Oh, I want to talk about all that. The TV show has kind of changed Matt's backstory just a smidge, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for a lot of people that have only watched the TV show, has no idea about the books, they're looking at this kid and they're like, what's the deal with this guy? He's kind of gloomy, kind Mm -hmm. of dark. A little snarky. A little snarky, a little bit of a thief. A little thievery from corpses, nonetheless. From corpses from girlfriends, from whomever. Good point. (laughs) But for just cause, like he's not doing it because he likes thieving. Right, right. It's not a pastime. Yeah. It's a survival technique. Yeah, in the books, he's a bit of a thief as well. He's not one that leaves a cooling pie in the windowsill for (laughs) no one but himself to take. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, the pie. He usually does at least try to share, but I sometimes don't know if that's because he wants to share the pie or he wants to share the blame with someone other mm. than just himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be a little bit of both. I mean, that's that's his thing. He's like, he's the duality. He's the pie thief and the pie share. And then in the, I know, right? In the TV show, he's the bracelet thief so he can get lanterns for his little sisters. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's a reason to him doing it. It's not always him just being a giant jerk. And in some ways, like, he just, especially in the book, it almost just feels so impulsive. Like, he just can't help himself. Yeah, this is a great point to get into the dagger. He's a bit of a magpie. He sees shiny things, and he's kind of like, ooh. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> did it, didn't we talk about how he went all like Scrooge McDuck and uh, Shadar Le- yeah, and Shadar Lagoth when they get to like that space. Yeah, you can with, just like, see him like high diving yeah, into, into the treasure. And through and be like, yes. woo! Backstroke. <laughs> <Guys. laughs> through it all. <laughs> I love that image, actually. So what do you think drives him towards treasure? Is he just a just a fun guy out for a good time? Like that's just his nature? I do think that is at least part of his nature. But I also, like, there are moments in the series where, like, the wealth that he has accumulated, he kind of holds back and uses for other people almost Mm -hmm. more often than himself. Like, he just gets to a point where he's like, yeah, I can always just make more money. So he just, like, kind of tosses it around at people, which I just wanted to say, like, to kind of wrap up the question that you asked, like, I do think that he's attracted to bright shiny things but in some ways i feel as though it's driven by a sense or a desire for security in some ways and i have to say like that kind of undercurrent to it feels almost similar to the personality that they give matt in the tv show where like this poor guy like, we've talked about his wardrobe and how thin it is and, like... So what would you say are the main, like, differences that we're just getting, like, right off the bat season one? Because we don't know exactly where they will take him in season two. We can guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what were these kind of, like, first thoughts? Well, my first thought was outrage. Okay. Um, <laughs> Why? Because of... The backstory they were giving his family, it didn't fit in with the cozy, happy Emmons Field vibe that I've kind of always glossed over this little section of the Westlands. But I feel as though giving him this darker backstory pushes the exposition about Matt as a character faster Mm -hmm. in the TV shows than it might have in the books. Like, we're not getting Matt's early 
backstory, especially in Eye of the World. Like he goes from like <laughs> he likes he's to that cover guy. someone's dog and flower and yell that it's a ghost dog just to watch women like run and scream. Yeah, like, this is Matt. He's all about his pranks. Yep, and tomfoolery. Tom I feel Fullery. like girls love him because he's mischievous. I think guys want to be him because he always kind of lands on his feet. And then he's just cool. Yeah, he is kind of cool. He's kind of the rogue. Yeah. Of the three guys from Emmonsfield, Matt is my favorite. And I still say that about the TV show, Matt, too. He made me laugh. You know, like he had like that snarky, dry wit that I just can't get enough of and so even like little one-liners from him were just like yes. yeah it was it was it made things lighter mm -hmm. and then he sadly comes upon a dagger which is kind of like the big moment where matt changes and i feel like the audience is like okay what's going on with this guy we're still trying to figure out who the dragon reborn is and he suddenly has this darkness about him, and we are led astray by the writers to thinking that he's possibly a channeler, mm -hmm. and he is sick. But mm -hmm. as readers, we know <laughs> exactly what's going on. And then following up towards the end of season one, the audience, I think all audience members would understand that it's actually this dagger. But they don't mm -hmm. really explain why mm -mm. or how mm -mm. or what is going on with it mm -hmm. and i definitely want to talk about this ruby hilted shadar logoth dagger and maybe we'll talk a little bit about what happens in eye of the world because it explains it so much easier i think okay so in the books it pretty much happens in a similar manner the mm -hmm. group ends up in this ruined city of shadar logoth and our boys kind of go on a little mischief making <laughs> yes in the in the books the girls all stay behind, behind. and it's rand matt and perrin that all go off mm -hmm foolishly adventuring together yes a big difference here is that we're missing a character from the tv show mm -hmm. and this character in the books is called more death mm -hmm. and he's kind of this creepy ghostly type character that has mm -hmm. his own history and lore in the books mm -hmm. and matt takes a dagger from this guy mm -hmm. and it's after Moraine said don't touch anything don't take anything mm -hmm. or if, if someone gives you something do not take it but yeah. Matt being Matt is like well I took it on my own so he's kind of like worked himself around Moraine's sage advice <laughs> right only a trickster Shadar Logoth was once known as Arid Hall it was once this really nice great place then this dude named Mordeth shows up to town and people start kind of turning on each other. It's like the Jamestown like mystery, like mm -hmm. just from one moment to the next, like everyone in this they town nation just is gone and God. nobody knows what happened. And mm -hmm. it's all started because this one guy shows up. Mm -hmm. and, and he like just spreads evil and distrust paranoia greed like all of the vices that you could possibly think up it seems like he just radiates these things into mm -hmm. arid hall as a city and in the books this character continues on in one form or a next or mm -hmm. another for a while i won't get into it because i'll leave some of the mystery but after Matt gets this dagger, he gets really sick. And in the books, he's awful to Rand, but somehow kind of pushes through it and still manages to be an okay friend despite all the stuff that he's going through. That's true. That's he's, true. He's very sick. Mm -hmm. A very sick young man. Mm -hmm. And it takes a whole swath of Aes Sedai to heal him. It's not just Moraine comes in and you're healed it's everything's fine it's a group 
mm-hmm. of full Aes Sedai sisters With... who have to really fight. And they have to, don't they have to have a Tarangriol as yeah. well to like still amp up their power? Yeah. So yeah, so, like breaking was... him from that bond completely. It was much different. I'm not saying it's better or worse, Mm-mm. but in the show, it was kind of like dealt with and then we're moving on. Mm-hmm. And then we have the issue where our character, Matt, left the show. Mm-hmm. So it seems like there was a little bit of a rewriting. The actor, like yeah. the actor that played Matt mm-hmm. left the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there was a bit of a rewriting going on. And that's why possibly things felt a little bit like out of the blue. Like Matt kind of deciding, oh, I'm not going to go to the ways anymore with you guys. See ya. <laughs> so Bye. There were, yeah, so there was like a lot of different things that I think maybe led to confusion for some yes. people. Myself included. And we're trying to kind of uncover it for people so you don't have to Google what's the deal with Matt Cawthon because you don't want to spoil yourself. I yeah, mean, cause... he's he has one of the most exciting, hilarious, fun trajectories of all like <laughs> almost all of the characters and sorry i'm definitely thinking of some of his better like my mind is quickly clipping through a best mm-hmm. of matt from yeah. the book and yeah yeah he's just so good he's good with the quarter staff he likes his horses he's a they betting. don't show that quarter staff scene amber if yeah i will be so sad you get that fly. And out of all of the things that he isn't, he is not a bloody noble, so don't call him that. Yeah. Regardless of how much lace, velvet, ribbons he decides to adorn himself with, he is not a lord. <laughs> I really hope they don't put show mat and ribbons or lace. Maybe like a little. A little. I'd be okay with a little. I would like crazy amounts of embroidery. I'm just thinking of that (laughs) episode of Seinfeld with the pirate shirt. Oh, no. I don't want that. Please. Please please don't give us that. No. (laughs) Things I can live without for Matt. Cross it off the list immediately. (laughs) I don't want that. Not having Matt at the end. It was a curveball. It really, it was, and I, it wasn't intentional, correct me if I'm wrong, but they were not expecting to not have Matt until the very end of the season. Like he was supposed I to be there the all the way through. I believe the word that was thrown out was crisis mode. Oh my! Refilming quickly, redoing CGI quickly. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Lines. I it's I've heard some things that Brandon Sanderson has said, and it kind of just sounds like it was something that they had to deal with very fast. But regardless of that, we've got show Matt now. We're getting a new actor for Matt, which is going to be exciting. We're dealt a bunch of cards, every one of us. And they're not all easy hands. But it's down to us how we played it. Because I'm actually really excited about him. I'm just ready to see Matt, you know, beat the snot out of a couple of dudes that deserve it, which might be one of all of the Matt fans out there. There's a very, very exciting scene in the books that I think people adore. And I think I think next season, I mean, maybe it's hopefully. my highlight reading through that book every time every time i don't know how many times i've read that particular book but i love it we'll see i really hope that sticks around so things end up in the books quite different Mm -hmm. and if you're thinking about reading eye of the world sign off now don't listen anymore because this is (laughs) this will be explaining something from eye of the world that's quite important But the group all goes to the Blight together Mm -hmm. as a whole. And they are slaughtering creepy creatures. And they meet a man who's kind of a tree man Mm -hmm. later. 
and there's butterflies and things growing in this area where everything else is dead and at this point it's Moraine and the women Mm -hmm. that can channel Mm -hmm. and Rand kind of grouping up using their powers against not just one evil entity but two and everyone gets hit pretty hard it's not Mm -hmm. an easy thing moraine gets pretty battered up rand i think is pretty much unconscious and then somehow has a fight in the sky (laughs) which would just not work on tv (laughs) right yeah yeah and then matt is he's not really that crucial for this ending of he's the really not he's more there to be almost the levity in the situation mm-hmm. the like almost human aspect i mean how many times does he like lean out of his saddle to throw up you know like he feels like the real person you want to have around so yeah i don't think matt was that necessary to be at the eye of the world i actually really just fine that it's rand and moraine it works really well it it really does it just switched some things around it changed some of like my expectations and we talked about it in the podcast as well like how in the books it feels as though like our little group that left Emmons Field is closer, even though they're also more separate. But here we have a situation where they've been separated before they go through all of like these really rough hardship moments together. But yeah, big things to take away. Matt's not that different than he is in the TV show from book to show. The main thing I think that feels different is because we've kind of aged up the cast a little bit. So when you think of, like, a younger boy, like, stealing a pie, Mm -hmm. it's a different mental image than an older young adult stealing a bracelet. So, yeah, I'm I'm okay. Like, I'm excited to see where our Mr. Cawthon goes in season two. And, yeah. I I agree with you. I feel as though they... Once I got adjusted to Matt's home life being what it was portrayed to be (laughs) in the TV show, I was much more comfortable with him as the character they were making him into. And I feel, especially for people who are just getting it from the TV show, we're amping up our character's maturity levels as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, and if you're amping up the maturity level, stealing things feels more wrong than it if does. it's a younger. Yeah. I mean, man. finding out that it's like usually for things like involving his sisters and the care of his sisters. And I mean, that's the Matt that I love. He's Robin Hood. <laughs> he has a Robin Hood mentality. He's the Wheel of Time's Robin Hood. He's also the Wheel of Time's Loki, I think, is, like, the connection that gets made with him a mm-hmm. lot. Mm-hmm. Um, which, I mean, when we do, like, a Matt 101, we can dig into. But, like, there's definitely a few different places, cultures of lore that have inspired Matt as a character and whether it's book Matt or TV Matt, I think he remains in in my heart one of my very favorites. <laughs> Do you want to end it there? We've recorded for about you wanna thirty-six say, you minutes. You want to sign off or anything? Yeah. With that said, I think we can. <laughs> wrap this up for today our episodes are going to be a little shorter on youtube than what we've been doing in our show coverage Uh, but we will continue to do our longer podcasts as well in fact we're going to be jumping into our great hunt recording right after we finish with this so join us on the podcast like and subscribe please I still can't believe those are words that I say, but please. (laughs) (laughs) And thanks for joining us. Absolutely.